So we have, we have documented evidence that when we go in these communities and work with the people from within, that we can reduce violence and improve the quality of life in these communities. So, so that's, that's my experience. I just want to jump right in there and say this to you, sir. When black people kill black people, black people go to jail, sir. When police kill black people, they are not punished, sir. When black people kill black people, black people go to jail, sir. But these police officers continue to kill us in, with impunity like they did when they hung us from trees and they posed from pictures with the KKK with badges on, sir. Now, I agree. We have a lot of white allies in the Black Lives Matter movement. Yes, we do. We appreciate that support. I didn't see, well, maybe it's, it's from what I saw, but I, you know, the civil rights movement had a lot of white supporters too, okay? Now, if we elect people to do a job for the people, and they do not do that job for the people, then the people have every right to show up at a house that the people pay for and demand justice. Why? Because these politicians come to our houses when they want our votes, don't they? When they need their position signed to get on the ballot, they come to our houses, don't they? They greet us where we are. However, when they're not doing their jobs and we greet them where they are, then it becomes a problem. I, I, it's it's so 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 hypocritical. Now you must understand this: police officers go on work shortages when they are held accountable. When there's talks of holding them accountable, that's when police officers say, "Hey, you know what? Hands off! I'm not working." They swore an oath to protect the public. What gives them the right? They swore an oath to obey the laws. What gives them a right to say, I'm not working because people seek to enforce those laws. I'm not working but because the public seems to want to push forward with laws that make sense that will help me do my job better. They, they have a problem with that. So a police, um, a police officer's work shortage is a, is a dereliction of their duty, sir. It is one of the most dishonorable things that they can do, sir, because they swore an oath to their state laws and to the Constitution that they will uphold the law. And they do not have the time to have temper tantrums because if they have temper tantrums, then lives could be lost. And I'll end with this. Stop talking about crime if you're not talking about the root causes of crime. Because once again, it plays into that white supremacist, also that conservative narrative narrative that they throw at us. Oh, well, what about crime in your neighborhoods? Well, yeah, what about housing security? What about people worrying about how they're going to pay rent? What about uh, uh, people in, in their, their children's schoolings that, that uh, I believe the proper phrase is suck? Their schools suck. Anywhere that you go in any congressional district and you have a 40% dropout rate, it is not the parents. It is, it, it, it is not the, the environment. It is that school that's failing to teach our children uh, adequately. So let's, let's talk about all these circumstances. Uh, communities with the highest murder rate have the highest unemployment rate. And here's where we agree. Here's where we agree. We need to build up our people. However, while we're building, we need to keep the police's knees off our necks. We need to stop them from harassing them. Now, I grew up in the South Bronx. I grew up in the South Bronx in the height of the crack epidemic. Shootings outside my doors, all kinds of things going down, going on outside. I was never taught to look down or label anyone. I could, and this is my life today. I could walk one day and hold a conversation with killers and within hours be sitting at a table with a billionaire. This is my life. That's the duality of my life. And I don't judge anyone. I don't blame anyone. But I'm very realistic about this. White supremacy and systemic racism are very real. And Black people face harder circumstances than 
white people on any given day and twice on Sunday. Do we need to build up? Yes. Do we need to tear down white supremacy? Yes. I don't understand how it has to be one or the other. Well, let so me just say, my... let, let me just say a point of agreement with you. Go ahead, Bob. My point of agreement, police officers have a obligation to a higher obligation, a higher responsibility because they have the power of the state and they should be held to a higher standard than the rest of, the rest of us. I agree with that. And when they do commit crimes, they need to be punished severely. But I still think that facts matter too. Facts matter. And the reality is that uh, if you talk about lynchings, there were about 48,000 blacks lynched over a period of 40 years in the South. Blacks kill one another, that number, in nine months. So numbers do count and incidents. And it, and, and it hasn't always been like, you, you said that there's a relationship between unemployment and crime. Well, let's go back in history and look at what happened in 1930 to 1940 when we were in the depression, when the unemployment rate for whites was 25% and almost 40% for blacks, when racism was a fact of law and we had no voting rights, what was our response to it? Well, the response was we had a higher marriage rate than, than whites. Elderly people could walk in their communities without being fear of being murdered or assaulted by their grandchildren. And so if we were able to maintain control of ourselves and not engage in the, and also at from the turn of the century up into 1950, the incarceration rates of blacks was only about 25 to 30%. And so are you saying that, that, that conditions today where the, 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 uh, we, we are 13% of the population and 20, 53% of the prisons that somehow that's related that right people are worse today than it was in the 1930s. So let's look at the facts and say, if we were able to not engage in, in, in behavior uh, to killing ourselves when we were hot 50% unemployed, when we had no voting rights and racism was a rule of law, we ought to look back and say, if we did it then, why not now? We closed the, the education gap between 1920 and 1940 in the South because we set up 5,000 schools. We closed it within six months. So my, my point is, looking back, if we, if we were able to uh, control ourselves and perform under those conditions, what's, why, why are we can't do it today? Most of those education systems that you complain about are being run by black people. If racism were the issue, why are kids failing in systems run by their own people? Wait, can I just I'll jump in right there? So, 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 so when, when Massa had a black slave whip another black slave, that mean that there was no racism in place? So you mean to tell me that, that, that a Democrat working for a white establishment that betrays his people is still not playing a hand in racism? That makes no sense to me, sir. That makes no sense to say I black people. I have no idea running. what you're talking look, look, about. Oh, I think, uh, let me rewind. Let me rewind. Let me rewind. Let me rewind. I don't know what you're talking about. Slowly. Let me rewind and walk you through this slowly. Yeah, right get, now, yeah, New York this. City, schools are suffering, communities are suffering. We have black and brown leadership, right? And our schools are suffering, our neighborhoods are suffering. We have real estate developers. We have special interests who are non-black buying off our politicians. So what you're telling me is because it's black people out front that it's still not uh, racist uh, ramifications, that it's not white supremacist like ramifications. Is that what you're telling me? Because black people are at the head of it, are, are out front that there's not these white people behind them pulling their strings. And you talk to me about crime if you research crime, and which I'm sure you have, there's poverty and there's the anxiety and the mental health issues that come along with that. Like I, I, you told me to look at the facts. I'm inviting you to do the same thing. We live in a very different 
world. We live in a very different world, but you cannot ignore all of the determinants of criminal activity, right? And, and you take black people who live, who, 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 and compare them to white people who have similar financial circumstances, right? And that white community is safer. Why? Like, what is it? What is it that causes us to be behave like this? And this is, these are a number, a number, a number of factors. You know, it's, it's just so hard. Are you saying, let me ask you a question. Are you saying that in cities like Baltimore, Detroit, where blacks were the mayor's office, the police department, the school system, the housing authority, the healthcare system, the courts, the police, where majority of blacks have been in control for 50 years. Are you saying that these black officials are powerless to act in the best interest of their people because white people behind them are manipulating them? Is that what you're I'm asking you a question. I think, I think, it's, I, think I, I find it funny because um, I think it's a combination of things, sir. I think that there is the capitalism. Now, I, I myself, I am a champagne socialist. You, you know what a champagne socialist is? I believe that people can have whatever we want as long as there's nobody hungry or starving. I think that everybody should have health care. I think that everybody should have a free education. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that this is the problem. Like, you might sit there and look and think, oh, he's Black Lives Matter. He's with the Dems. I fucking, I'm sorry. I cannot stand the Dems, but the Republicans are a bunch of racists, right? Who endorse racists, who march alongside racists, who, so I, here, here's my thing. Don't broad stroke us. Don't broad stroke us. And to get back to what you were saying, black representation doesn't equate to black power. Like black representation doesn't equate to black power. When we say systemic racism, we start talking about wealth, which you said, we start talking about redlining. We start talking about all of these issues. We start talking about all of these issues. And as Dr. King said, you know, everybody loves Dr. King. You can't tell the man to pull his bootstraps up if he doesn't have a pair of boots. Well, let me just ask you again, this, in Chicago, and you know what that place like now, in 1929, blacks had 731 businesses, $100 million in real estate assets with a 15% uh, out of wedlock birth. Tell me in the face of redlining and all those other things you make, how were we able to accumulate wealth and have stable, and I can run down every city that had hotels and they had uh, stable communities. Uh, how were we able to do that during the jury segregation when we were being lynched every day? How were we able to have, we weren't killing each other. We didn't have the black on black crime back in then. Tell me how we were able to do that back then and we can't do that now. Tell me, tell me why, why were we able to do it when we were literally uh, in segregation. Can you tell me, give me an answer to that. I believe we had a stronger black community. I believe that oh, black people, okay. I believe that we had a strong, stronger. There you go. All right, now we, we, had a, we had a stronger black community. Now, Thank you. right now, we, okay. are, we are fractured, right? We All are right. fractured and there's not enough being done. To but we did it, though, people right? together. But, right. but here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is what we're doing as Black Lives Matter New York, as Black Opportunities. We're trying to build Black community, right? And if you listen, everybody's talking about unity. We're just trying to figure out how to do it, right? And, and I'm going to tell you, I could walk it better than I talk it. I could, I could show you better than I could tell you, right? We're mm -hmm. trying to do that. I'm, I like segregation. We were straight in segregation. I just think they need to open up the opportunities. 